Hey guys, I want to talk about something that I think confuses a lot of people. Now, I've been playing with cars for a long time, and I don't think I've ever seen anything confuse people as much as the humble little automotive relay. People just don't understand them. They don't understand how they work. They don't understand how to wire them up. I've seen guys wire these up, and I've just shaken my head. It's like, you really have no clue on how these work, do you? So today, I want to run through it and just explain what a relay is, what it does, and how to make it work. So what is a relay? Well, quite simply, it is an electrically operated switch, all right? You flick a switch on your dash somewhere, it powers this, which then powers a circuit, usually a high current circuit. Could be headlights, driving lights, thermo fans, fuel pumps, could be a bunch of things. Automotive manufacturers use them for just about everything. Your car is full of relays. So here's a little whiteboard to illustrate what I'm talking about. So, here is our relay. Now, a relay, most of them have got four terminals. This one has five because it's actually designed to power two circuits at once. And then you've got others that have five terminals to allow it to switch the other way. So this is a normally open relay, so the circuit is open. Uh, some of them, you know, you can use the fifth terminal to set it up as a normally closed relay. So when you power it, it opens. It's just one of those things. It's not that confusing. I've set this up as a four terminal relay. All right, so power coming from the battery on this end, earth at the other end, all right, and a switch. We flick our switch, it closes the relay, which closes this switch, and over here, it powers our light bulb. It's pretty simple. So what we're gonna do is set this up on this wooden board. We're gonna set up a switch at this end, a light bulb at this end with a relay, and show you how to wire up your relay how to make it work first time. So I've just got to drill a couple of holes for my switch and my light bulb. Bit of Ryobi goodness. Okay, so that's gonna be my switch, which is here, and which I just realized the board is thicker than the threads of my switch, which means, <laughs> Yeah, okay. Maybe I can just squeeze it in there. All right. Squeezes into the hole nicely. Oh, I can barely get to the terminals. Hmm, okay. This is not working out the way I planned. <laughs> Well, thankfully, we have this little Ryobi kit, which has a million different bits in it. So, where's our switch? And uh, do we need it that deep? Yep. All right. Usually a little wood bit to uh, sink a hole in, so we can put our switch in and get at the terminals on the back. switch, <laughs> poking through the hole, and now I can get at the terminals on the back. Gotta love these Ryobi kits. I mean, they've got all the bits, 
they're pretty cheap. Like this kit's only like 75 bucks or something like that. So great value for money. Alrighty, let's put our little, whoops, light bulb in, which I hope I just didn't break. Okay, so here's the front side of our panel. We've got a switch there. We've got a light over there. Obviously, there is no wiring yet. We will do that now. So what I'll also do is I'm going to put a couple bolts through this wooden panel to simulate our battery terminals. So they'll be kind of like down here and here. And then we'll use a jump pack to power them. things easier I'm going to use this 10 amp twin core wire just make the job a little bit simpler all right you can see there's a red and a black in there So most relays will have a diagram actually on the relay to show you how they operate, just to make it easier. And it'll have the numbers of the terminals that you're supposed to be using. Many of them also show it on the back of the packet like so. So that shows you all the wiring. So you can see here, it's got two 87s. So it means you could actually run two circuits off this. But uh, if it, this was a relay which would switch over from, say, normally open and normally close, it would have the second one labelled as 87A. But anyway, we'll keep going. That's why this sucker up. Plug that into one side and plug that into 87 on the other side. That is all wired up, so we should be able to apply power to those, hit the switch, and it should all work. I'm just going to cover these with a bit of tape, but in theory, this should all work. So, after much cutting and crimping, this is what we have, and I will run you through it. So we've got our three-prong switch here, all right, remember, it is a switch with a light. Positive and negative go up here, okay, so that just runs down here to our po positive and negative terminals. And then the third prong goes off to the relay, so that's an output. So that's when the switch is activated, because it's got positive and negative running to the switch, this terminal then becomes live, that power supplies 12 volts to our relay. On the other side, on the opposite side of the relay, we have an earth wire going down here to earth, right? So that will then activate that relay. So everything to there will activate that. For our circuit, we have a power wire running down here to our terminal, right, to the relay, and then wire running to our light, which is polarity conscious, I have discovered, and then the other side to earth, okay? So it's seeking earth out through the light. So let's spin it around, hook some power to it, make sure it works. There's our world's heaviest jump pack from Don Schumacher Racing. 
Yes, that Don Schumacher. It's actually an awesome jump pack. This thing never fails to start a car. It's 12 volt or 24 volt, depending on your poison. And it's been an awesome little workhorse for us. It's connected up, so positive, negative, power on. We have 12 volts there, we have our switch. Bingo bango, she works. We have our indicator light here and we have our powered light there. Beautiful. All right. Now I'll just run you through the actual terminals and the connections on the relay. Let's go to the whiteboard. Okay, so there's our relay. So what we've done is we have our switch, our three prongs, so positive and negative going to our switch. And then when that's activated, it energizes this wire going to our 85 prong on our relay. 86, which is the opposite, goes down to the negative terminal of the battery. So when you flick that switch, that circuit completes. All right, so we then we have energy running through that circuit and it activates the relay. When that relay activates, it then energizes this circuit. So we've got power coming from the battery to terminal 30, and then 87 is the output. It's seeking earth, so it goes through our light bulb and down to the negative terminal. Pretty simple. Power always travels from positive to negative. It's just the way electricity works. And uh, yeah, it's pretty simple. Electricity, it's good stuff. So once again, power on, power on. Everything works. Now I reckon we should use our little circuit to power something else. Something exciting. And here we are in the back of the workshop about to do something silly. This is the airbag out of our Barina. So we have wired it up, locked it up in the vise, and we're gonna set it off, see what happens. So we've got a bunch of cameras set up. What we're gonna do is uh, power up the circuit and then hit the switch and see if this thing goes boom. I have no idea how this is gonna go because there are no test runs. It either works or it doesn't. And we only get one shot. All right, ears and eyes, let's give this a go. Jump pack is on. Okay, counting down from five. Five, four, three, two, one. I'm guessing it went off. Much success! Wow, that's quite warm. See why people get burnt. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not roasting hot, but it is definitely warm. Well, there we have it. A deployed airbag. Yeah, still a little bit of heat in that unit, but uh, not a lot. There was certainly a lot of heat in this bag when it first came out fair bit of powder and a nice burning smell. You can really see why people think their cars are on fire after a big shunt. Um, yeah, really has a strong burning smell. But yeah, the old Barina air bag, she's still got it. And that's a like a 25 year old bag. So that was interesting, pretty cool. Not sure how the cameras went with that. I, it comes out really fast. I just reviewed our slow-mo camera and uh, it's, it doesn't look that slow. It looks like, boom, here I am. So uh, let's do another one. Here's one we've got from the passenger side, I think. Okay, second airbag test, here we go. Counting down from five, five, 
four, three, two, one, ignition. Whoa, that one went off a lot bigger. Send smoke signals with this one. Wow, look at the size of it. It's a big bag too. I mean, I, I expected it to be bigger because, you know, passenger seat and all that sort of things further away from the, uh, the humans. But wow. <laughs> it just reeks. Wow, that stinks. Whew. She come out with a bang, that's for sure. Much louder than the driver's side. I'll give you the tip. Probably should say, don't do this at home, kids. We were very careful. Like, we had it fully wired up, ready to go before we even put power near it. So I would suggest do not do this at home because you could do yourself an injury. We're professional idiots, so it's okay. But I hope you enjoyed our little exercise. Wow, it's even got smoke rings. Check it out. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed our little exercise here. Now you know how to wire up a relay and a three-prong switch too. And uh, you know what an airbag looks like when it goes off without the danger of maybe death and car accidents. So, we'll catch you next time on Carnage.